I teach AP Biology, AP Environmental Science, and a graduation level PBAT section of Environmental Science. A PBAT is a performance-based assessment task. Uh, it is an alternative assessment where a student will conduct an experiment uh, they will design the experiment from scratch as a member of a group, they will collect data from that experiment, and then they will draw conclusions based on their analysis of that data. Um, they're required to submit that paper. They then go in front of an independent panel of judges um, that review their work and they present their work and they have to def kind of defend their thesis to them. It gives them a more authentic version of their work. They get to really take a deep dive into functional scientific work that they might do at a graduate level or at a career level in the field of science. The way that we prepare it is um, we break it down. Throughout the course of the assignment, there's going to be probably 14 to 20 different checkpoints where students will turn in their writing and there will be an opportunity for them to receive feedback from an instructor or from p feedback from a peer. So being able to stop in those places and really do some editing and revision, really take a look at language and where those struggles are is key to the whole process. He's making sure that kids understand that it's an iterative process. He, they, you have to try again and correct and fix and hear feedback and that is a normal way of learning. Those of us who are participating in this process with those kids, we see the development over time. I mean, I have kids who are afraid to say one word, and then you go see their panel, and they're talking about subject matter that a lot of us were unfamiliar with in an expert way. That is like why we get up in the morning. In the past, we've had students look into how climate change is affecting the caloric content of plants and kind of the energy content of different plant species. We've had students um, write papers evaluating cleanup efforts of environmental disaster sites. The goal is to make it as relevant as possible to, to the world that we live in. There's more than just what's in front of them and the content they're learning, but it's how they become good citizens. So I will open this up a little bit early to collaboration. So discuss with each other and see if you can't figure this one out. It's a very diverse group of, uh, of, of students, all of whom deal with the struggles that you see in inner city neighborhoods, that you see in low income neighborhoods. The fact that mom or dad might be at home working two, three jobs just to, just to make ends meet. But really at the end of the day, they're kids and they're looking for ways to succeed and they're excited about college and they're excited about what's next. Um, so trying to figure out, okay, what are the goals? What are the goals in the family? What are the goals for the student? What, that's always an adventure and, and it's really a thrill. His passion just shines through. I think what he does a good job of is constantly encouraging kids to do more. It's always done with the best interest of that child, which is you know making sure that the child is constantly honored in the process, cheerleading, um, um, building that self-esteem, and he just makes science feel cool is so much of this pops up in our everyday life. So it's my hope that students can tackle all of those things after leaving my classroom from a point of strength. I hope they walk away with a, enough of a science background and an enough of a, an inquisitive mind to make an informed decision when they have to vote on candidates and ballot measures and, and really the future of our country and our world.